Over the last year, we've seen the release of many large survival games. Sons of the Forest and Ark Survival Ascended in 2023. Then, as of more recently, games like Enshrouded and Power World gained attention. These titles all brought their unique gameplay to various platforms, and were all quite successful in their own way. Though, in saying that, it still felt like something was missing. So, I took it upon myself to fill this void. Researching the survival genre for hours on end, its new and upcoming games as well. And to my luck, the game I was looking for, the one that could fill this void, was released two weeks ago. And it's very strange to say the least. I bring you Nightingale. Releasing on the 21st of February, this open world survival game takes you through different realms, battling enemies, hunting for food, building, you name it. With the end goal being to become an advanced realm walker. That's right, not defeating the Ender Dragon, escaping on a helicopter, or ascending the world. But to walk realms like a true professional. And boy oh boy, when I heard that I could become an advanced realm walker, I had to find out what this game was all about. No, but in all seriousness, I'm reviewing this game because of this guy. I saw him in the trailer and I thought the game was going to be really magical or something. And it was, but I'll get back to that later in the video. I played for hours on end just so I could make this review. And to my surprise, this game was better than I thought it would be in many aspects. But what I wasn't expecting was how strange this game was going to be. And I'm not saying that in a negative way, but there are features in the game that just make me question why. And hey, if you love the game, I'm not going to be dissing it throughout the video. I know these features are probably just to add to the aesthetic, or make the game feel even more like a Harry Potter movie, but I have to address these things. Anyway, this game offers you a world filled with adventure, mystery, and survival. While you explore diverse and dangerous landscapes, you'll gather resources to build your own haven, craft tools and weapons to survive, and encounter both majestic and terrifying creatures along the way. This sounds great, and it did to me. Especially when I saw the trailer, it really lured me in quite a bit. I mean, the worlds and creatures just look incredible to say the least. Though, if I'm being honest, the amount of skepticism I had about the actual gameplay itself compared to the trailer was quite large. And after playing the game, I understood why. The game was strange, very strange. And this is how it went. As the game loads up, the first thing you have to do is create your character. And I was very surprised by the amount of details and options available. Which for many players, especially those who are trying to get a certain look, is very handy. After choosing a couple options myself, the game then asked me to pick who I wanted my character's parents and bloodline to be. So I gave him two dads. And well, his bloodline was basically just African dads. Afterwards, the game wanted me to shape his facial structure based off his family genetics. And I somehow ended up with this guy. Please don't ask me how, because I will not be releasing a tutorial. Anyway, I named him Joshua and moved on. You're then told about the game's lore, which if summarised is basically that humanity escaped a devastating event called the Pale by travelling to the magical Feywilds, which are different realms. You, a realm walker, then explore these vibrant yet dangerous realms to survive and uncover the truth behind the disastrous event. Just wow. But before I hype you up too much, let's get on to the fun stuff. The actual gameplay itself. After learning about the game's lore, you'll be put into this Elden Ring-like cave tutorial. After walking for a while, you'll see a portal along with a leprechaun called Puck. And throughout the game, you'll see him a lot. And when I say that he legit tries to steal every cameo possible, I mean it. Okay. Oh, we're in a sand biome. Summer runs through my Though, after speaking to Puck for a while in the cave, you'll have to use the nearby realm card machine, which is what you use to teleport around realms. After putting two cards into the machine and admiring the portal as it opens, you'll get told the fiends have smelt your stench, which I didn't understand personally. The fiends have caught your despairing stench. Yo! After teleporting to the next realm, you'll find yourself in nature. And yes, you'll have to speak to the leprechaun again. After that, you'll gain some independence in the world. Within my first minute personally, I collected a few plants and murdered a deer. From this point onwards, the game will have you doing a variety of tasks, such as collect blueberries or build a campfire. After that, you'll go through another portal and repeat that same process, though learning how to craft something new each time. The Desert Realm teaches you how to craft basic tools and shelter. The Swamp Realm has you fighting enemies. Then, this Forest Realm has you crafting more advanced tools and equipment. The game goes on like this for quite a bit, until you have a better understanding for how everything works. And this game has a lot of content. Whilst adventuring these realms, you can also find other survivors, being able to trade resources and get them to accompany you in a variety of jobs. 
So Nighting Hour has all the features a survival game generally needs, but what actually makes it special? Well, quite a few things, though primarily it's magic. The game is filled with it, and it doesn't shy away at any opportunity to incorporate it either. Some unique features I had throughout my gameplay included mob spawns that you could clear out by releasing a spell, called the Favour of Soaring, which cleanses the area from enemies spawning and sometimes gives you effects. A minor realm card machine. It changes a thing or two about the current realm you're in. You can see in my gameplay it gave me extra jump height and made the sky look absolutely insane. I'm not sure if it's only a temporary change or a permanent one, but it looked cool to see in game. And ammunition that can be enchanted with elements, such as lightning. Most of the fun I got out of Nighting Owl was just from the magic alone. Being able to discover tons of content and events within the game's world, and teleporting to other realms just felt great in the game. So now that we've gone over the basis of the game, how would I rate Nighting Owl overall? Well, this game was built upon a very unique narrative, differing from the standard survival game quite a bit. Its creatures, magical elements and realms were all executed quite well considering the near impossible idea of the game itself. The amount of freedom I felt that I had in the game was immense. Along with Nighting Owl's amazing graphics and insane amounts of content, the game felt immersive. Though it's also got its many flaws. I really tried my best to like this game, but it just wasn't for me. If you're the type of person who bought Hogwarts Legacy, then this will probably be more up your alley. The game looks amazing, but the gameplay just feels jiggity. The world is magical, and its aesthetic is all revolved around it. But that, compared with a massive complex world, just doesn't feel right to me. Yes, the magical elements can be pretty cool, but since there's just so much content and stuff going on, and that's usually a good thing right, but it feels all over the place in this game. Like, there's a lot of quantity in the game, but not enough quality. The game also has quite a few bugs, like many releases do, and I won't put that against the game, as these things usually get resolved quite fast. Though some things I think are intentional. The tree animation for instance was too realistic. The game also requires Wi-Fi to play solo, so there's no offline mode compared to the many survival games that don't require Wi-Fi. I can easily see how the game could be great fun, especially grinding all its content with your mates but it just doesn't feel ready. I get it, the developers wanted this game to be massive, and there's many good times to be had in the game itself, though Lighting Out is just not a mainstream game. It tried to be. The game just feels strange, and I don't know how this can be fixed. Anyway, that's my personal analogy. Peace.